Hi, and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to be talking about how to use linear regression to determine an MIC. So first of all, let's just revisit what an MIC is. It stands for Minimum Inhibitory Concentration. So M-I-C. The minimum inhibitory concentration is the lowest, that's why we say minimum, the lowest concentration of an antimicrobial compound that will prevent the growth of a microbe. So whatever is that smallest concentration, um, I'll just make one up, let's say it's 50 micrograms per milliliter, that prevents 100% of the growth of the microbe. So may or may not kill the microbe, um, but at least does prevent its growth at that concentration. So that's looking for the lowest concentration that you can use to prevent 100% of the growth. Now the MIC can be determined by challenging a pure culture of the microbe with multiple different concentrations. of a given antimicrobial compound. So let's say that you have discovered uh, a new pathogen and you want to know what the MIC of um, streptomycin is against that pathogen. That would be the lowest concentration of streptomycin that would prevent the growth of that microbe. Um, or, you know, on the opposite side, maybe you have discovered a new antimicrobial compound and you want to know how effective it is against a, a known pathogen like Staphylococcus aureus or E. coli. Uh, and so you want to get pure cultures of the, the, micro, of, of the microbe or the, the bacterium or the fungi or whatever that you are going to be studying and challenge it with multiple concentrations of the antimicrobial compound that you're using. So 10 micrograms per mil, 20 micrograms per mil, 30 micrograms per mil, 40 micrograms per mil. So multiple concentrations. And then plotting the inhibition data using a linear regression. And we'll talk more about that in a second. First, let's talk about what kinds of data you might be looking at. Depending on how you do the challenge, you could have different kinds of data. So for example, you can do a kind of a modified disc diffusion test. So think like a Kirby-Bauer test. And when I say modified, it's because depending on the particular um, microbe that you're using, you might have to use um, different, um, different types of auger, different types of media. Um, you might have to start out with um, different amounts of it to make sure you get a, a good thick lawn of growth and so forth, but some kind of disc diffusion test. Just as a reminder of what this is, this is where you have a petri dish and you put a, um, a, enough of the bacterium on there to result in a lawn, and then you put a disc in the middle, and this disc contains a certain concentration that you're testing of antimicrobial of an antimicrobial compound. And then you put it in an incubator, you come back you know, 24 hours later, and maybe you have a zone of inhibition. And that means um, you've got basically microbial growth in a lawn out here, and then you have a zone of inhibition in here. If you wanna know more about that, you can check out um, my video on the, the disc diffusion test. But here, the, the data that you're getting is this diameter right here, um, the diameter of that zone of inhibition where the, where the microbial could not grow. So you would have like a, a zone of inhibition measured in you know, millimeters. You could also take these cells and instead of doing a disc diffusion assay, you could put them in like a 96 well plate, which have these you know, 96 little wells that you put the, the bacteria in. Um, and then you put different concentrations of the antimicrobial compound in there. And then at the end of a few days, you measure the optical density. Um, and that is just meaning that you have a machine that sends some light through the well and the more bacterial growth there is, the more it will scatter the light, the less light will reach the detector on the other side. And that's a measure of optical density. That's how you can see different amounts of bacterial growth. And so of course, if there's no bacterial growth, then you have found the MIC. Um, if there's bacterial growth in all of them, then this is where you would use the linear regression that we'll talk about next. 
And another type of, of data that you can use is plate counts. And so this is where you maybe have um, a tube, you know, let, let's say 10 tubes with this, with this microbe in them. And um, each of the 10 tubes is testing a different concentration of the given antimicrobial compound. And then at the end of, let's say 24 hours, however long it takes the bacterium to kind of grow and to get well into that exponential growth phase. Um, and then you take maybe a milliliter from the tubes and do something called a plate count. And that's where you are putting the, the bacteria onto a plate, um, not with a disc of anti of, of antimicrobial compound, but just on a regular plate, and then counting the colony forming units. So counting the colonies to estimate the number of count, colony forming units. And then, um, so, so these are the three sort of major different ways that you could determine how inhibitory the different concentrations are. Once you've got that data, you have to plot it to do some kind of linear regression. So here I'm going to just use some made up example numbers, but um, we've got the antimicrobial concentration on the x-axis and your inhibition data on the y-axis, whether that's CFUs or optical densities or what have you. And so let's say um, at the, you know, the lowest antimicrobial concentration tested, we had quite a bit of growth still. And then as we test different concentrations, and these are getting to be larger concentrations each time, um, maybe we see something like that. And so what you can do here is you've got your plotted data. We can see that it's a roughly linear relationship. So we can have our spreadsheet program, whether you're using something like Excel or Google Sheets or another kind of spreadsheet, um, or even doing it by hand, you can, you can put in a line of best fit. So you do a, a linear trend line like that. And wherever that trend line, I'm going to have to extend my x-axis a little bit, wherever that trend line hits the x-axis, I'm going to put a big circle here. This right here, this x-intercept, is the estimated MIC, the estimated minimum inhibitory concentration. And so let's say that you tested um, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 micrograms per mil, and maybe that um, x-intercept is at 102 micrograms per mil. You know, I'm just making up these numbers right now. Then you know that you can go and test 102 micrograms per mil. Um, also, maybe some other numbers on, on either side of that, you know, 101 micrograms per mil, 100 micrograms per mil, 103 micrograms per mil, and so forth, to figure out which concentration actually inhibits 100% of the growth of that microbe, and then that would be your MIC. Now, there are some caveats. First, the data that I drew up here for us to work with was roughly linear, you know, already, but some relationships are actually going to be exponential. meaning that you'll see kind of an exponential curve. You might see data that looks more like that, for example. Um, if that's the case, then you can graph the log numbers of those to get that linear relationship. And then the intercept would be the logarithm of the MIC. And then you can back calculate the MIC from there. Another caveat to keep in mind is that some microbial populations have mixed susceptibility. And what that means is that you could have a population of microbes and, you know, maybe 10% um, of those cells would be outright killed at the very lowest antimicrobial concentration. And maybe the reason that you actually need 102 micrograms per milliliter is not because that's necessary for all the cells, but because that's necessary to kill the, the last 3% that are particularly resistant to this antimicrobial compound. And then the final caveat, this is still, and this is an extrapolation right here, and that's still just an estimate until it's tested. That means you can't just stop with the intercept. The next step is then to test uh, concentrations around this 102 micrograms per mil. So you test this exactly, and then you know a little bit down from it, and a little bit up from it to really pinpoint the actual 
minimum inhibitory concentration. So if you um, would like some more information on this kind of stuff, you can check out, I already mentioned I have a video on the disc diffusion test. You can look more into that process. Um, if you're interested in how um, hospitals look at MICs and um, analyze how MICs are changing in specific regions, you can also see my video on antibiograms. And other than that, thanks for watching Biology Professor, and I hope to see you next time.